The Palestinian flag still in evidence despite the massive onslaught. A war, says Israel, intended to end the activities of Hamas, a movement that refuses to recognize a self-defined Jewish state, and one that formed the majority in a democratically elected Palestinian government less than three short years ago. Standing outside what is still called the Arafat compound, a senior police officer, unwilling to give his real name, he asked to be called Abu Hatel, and takes us inside the main headquarters of the security services in Gaza. Work is well underway in attempting to restore order to the shattered buildings. And with the glass crunching under feet, we walk along the road to the police training division. On one side, a parade ground scarred by a massive crater. This is where the first rocket struck without warning two days after Christmas. There were 40 young trainees lined up here. All were killed. Some might have supported Hamas, some its political rival Fatah, and some may have had no political allegiance at all. The one thing certain is that they wanted to be policemen. This was not a training area for Hamas alone. It was for all who say I am Palestinian. It does not belong to Hamas. Anyone who is Palestinian had the right to train here. This is a police compound. International experts confirm the rockets were fired from attack helicopters, and Abu Hatel is as certain of his opinion. Israel made a mistake here if they thought Hamas would disappear or be pushed away. No. Now we are truly united. And as those in Gaza again take control of their streets, it appears that returning to what passes for normal is in itself an act of defiance. The power lines are being repaired as they've been so many times before. The faithful whose mosques have been destroyed pray in the open air. And there is newly harvested produce in the Beit Lachia market. The aroma of the spices masking the lingering smell of burnt flesh and cordite, the smell of war. The shoppers ignore the ruined buildings behind them. And the crater of the bomb that obliterated half the market area and killed a number of those who were selling or shopping here. This war was not just against Hamas. It was one prepared long ago before any truce. They just want to force Palestinians to their knees because they see us all as the enemy. This war has made all Palestinians more united. And you know Hamas has gained popular support. There were many like me who opposed Hamas in the past, but now may be prepared to support it. And in the wasteland created by Israeli troops and their tanks, even the most moderate are reconsidering their position. Shoki Ramos Salam retired as a teacher two years ago. He saved for 15 years to build his dream house, shared by his wife and children. This is the way the Israeli forces left it. This, he says, the death of the concept of land for peace of a deal in which Palestinians accept a state in the West Bank and Gaza with Israel as a friendly neighbor. As Palestinians, we, we accepted to live in Gaza and with the West Bank without occupation. And this is a strong decision. This is a strong decision to forget your land. But the Israelis do not, the Israelis do not accept this, even to give them more than 80% of our land, they can't accept this. They uh, speak about terrorism, and I want anyone in the world to tell me if there were any terrorism like this. Throughout the history, the Palestinians of Gaza seem to have suffered at all. They've experienced invasion, occupation, an ongoing blockade by the Israelis. They've seen what amounts to a civil war. Yet never, never has so much wanton destruction been caused. And yet, as great the destruction, as strong the swelling desire to recreate. Amidst the rubble, the people of Gaza are beginning, brick by brick, to rebuild the dream of a unified Palestinian state. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Gaza.